Welcome, I'm Dr. Stephen Cohen. What you're about to see is a videotape of a surgery which involved two procedures. One was repairing a dislocated, decentered interocular lens, and the second is removing a macular pucker. This surgery is being done using a 25 gauge small incision vitrectomy system. What you're seeing on the top left is the infusion being placed through a very small 25 gauge trocars. After the infusion's in place and running, two more trocars will be placed. These little blue trocars are used to insert instruments in the eye during the course of the procedure. This surgery is being done under local anesthesia. The patient's totally comfortable throughout the procedure. Also, this has been extensively edited. This was about a one hour surgery. What you're seeing here is the cloudy vitreous being removed from the eye prior to removing the epiretinal membrane. The instrument on the right is a small vitrectomy cutter. There's a light pipe on the left side of the screen which is used to illuminate the eye. We use a special lens system to visualize the back of the eye and what you're seeing here is the vitrectomy being done in front of the retina. The orange background is the retina. You can see the edge of the interocular lens about the middle of the screen and the interocular lens is decentered. It should be in the middle and not down on the bottom right where it is. As you can see the visual axis of the eye is not through the lens and because of that the patient has poor vision. In order to remove the macular pucker, a high resolution contact lens is placed on the eye and what you're seeing is a forcept on the right side of the screen which is used to peel the pucker gently from the retina. The pucker is a very thin layer of transparent tissue, not unlike scotch tape. It's very hard to see it as it's removed from the eye. If you look toward the middle of the screen, you'll see the edges of the pucker being pulled from around the forcept as the forceps maneuvered inside of the eye. The view of the retina here is compromised by the decentered intraocular lens. You'll see at the bottom of the screen the view is clear where the lens is in place and at the top the view is hazy. After removing the macular pucker a very small incision is made in the cornea and that's used to manipulate the lens and to recenter the intraocular lens. The haptics, which are the two little springs which hold the lens in place, are frozen inside the capsule. It takes a fair amount of force, as you'll see here, to hook the lens and to reposition it into the center of the pupil. Here the lens manipulator is being used to grasp the top of the lens, and the lens is being gently but firmly pushed into position and it's recentered to where it should be. Even though the lens is perfectly centered at this point, it's not stable. We do the surgery with the patient lying on his back, and when the patient sits up, there's a good possibility this lens will move out of position. <laughs> There are many different ways to stabilize malpositioned intraocular lenses. What I'm doing here is opening the capsule a little bit more than it's already opened. The capsule is a film of tissue which is in the back of the eye which is left at the time of surgery to stabilize the intraocular lens. Now viscoelastic which is a gel-like substance is put into the front of the eye. This helps keep the lens in position and also protects the cornea during manipulations performed in the anterior chamber, which is the front of the eye. Now that the lens has been mobilized, it's free to move about in the eye, and the capsule has been opened slightly, a second incision is made, and then what you'll see here is the eye softened up a little bit. You'll notice there are some folds that form in the cornea. Two instruments are needed to put the lens into the capsular opening. And what I do here is I position the edges of the optic of the lens, which is the round part behind the capsule. There you see the top part of the optic being put inside the capsule. And then what you'll see next is the bottom part of the optic. Things are upside down because we're looking at the patient from the top of his head. The view is a little bit hazy because the eye has been softened to allow the lens to properly position. There you see the other part of the optic being tucked behind the capsule. What keeps the lens from falling into the posterior chamber are the two haptics which are the spring-like pieces coming off of the edge of the lens. 
At this point, the lens has been stabilized within the capsule. It's slightly decentered, but the visual axis is well within the lens, and the patient achieved excellent vision. What was done here was the least traumatic possible procedure for this patient. Other options would have been to suture the haptics of the lens to the iris, to suture the haptics of the lens to the eye wall, or to remove the lens and exchange it for another lens. All of those options are more complicated than what we did here. At this point, the lens has been stabilized. It's been tucked into the capsule. The trocars have been removed. What I'm doing here is washing the viscoelastic out of the front of the eye to avoid any problems with pressure after the surgery. The trocars have already been removed from the eye, and we just inject an antibiotic at the end of the surgery. I hope you found this video instructive, and we'll take time to look at other videos and informational sheets on this website. Um, thank you for your attention.